right, good evening. Welcome to Koalau Baptist Church. Let's all stand together. Joy to the world. Hymn 104 in your hymnals if you need it. Hymn 104. Joy to the world on the first. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. Just across the page, O come all ye faithful, Hymn 105. O come, all ye faithful. Hymn 105. We'll see all three verses on the first. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come, ye, O come, ye to singing you may be seated
Well, I appreciate the choir. They've been a real blessing uh, this week and appreciate all their uh, hard work. Well, I want to read a scripture for you in Acts chapter 8. And then also I want to tell you about something that the cakey are doing. There's a little uh, brochure here for the cakey. Now, they're outside here, but there's a brochure for them to do and to go around and look at all the uh, missionary posters and to fill out. It's kind of a project to get them involved with missions, so you want to make sure and encourage them uh, to do that. So we're in Acts chapter 8. Before we uh, have a time to ask the Lord's blessings on the offering, we're reading these scriptures, and it's amazing. Wherever you find missions, you find rejoicing. And our theme for our conference is joy to the world. And it's always amazing. We have a commandment to get the gospel out. There will be an accompanying note of joy. If you find missions being done, you'll find rejoicing. And from the birth of Christ on. So let's read here in Acts 8, verse 29. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a dumb lamb dumb before his shearer. So opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? Or his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speakest the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And notice this next part. And he went on his way rejoicing. It's always like that. Always, all throughout the Bible. Joy to hear the message joy to share the message, joy to be changed by the message, joy, joy, joy. And let's pray. Father, we ask your blessings on tonight's service. We ask your blessings on these offerings. And Lord, we're thankful that we can give and to help us to be faithful in our giving. And then Lord, we pray you'll lead us as to what you'd have to do, have us to do for our faith promises here. And Lord, we thank you for your people faithful to come this week. We know many are battling illnesses, and so we appreciate uh, the faithfulness of your folks to be here. And, and Lord, we pray that uh, you will uh, give good health to all of our folks this year and, and that we'll not have to battle and struggle being shorthanded, but be able to have a full house uh, every day in the coming year and just grant to us health and uh, that we might be effective and serve you and uh, Lord we ask your blessings on the service tonight and again bless this time of dedication of the offering in Jesus name Amen
Mark the Herald Angels sing hymn 106. Sing with me. We'll sing the first and the last verse. Hark the herald angels sing on the first. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, a glory to the newborn King. The heaven born prince of peace, hail the son of righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born to gaze the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Let's all stand for our final hymn. This evening, hymn 111, 111, Silent Nights. We'll again sing the first and the last hymn. 111, Silent Night, Holy Night. Silent Night, Holy Night, all is calm, all is bright. Round a yon virgin mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. So Wonderful singing, you may be seated. Master, thou callest, I gladly obey. Direct me, and I'll find thy way. Uh, teach me the mission appointed for me. What is my labor, and where it shall be? O oh, Master, thou callest, and uh, this I reply. Ready and willing. Lord, here am I. A living or dying, I still would be thine. Yet I am more.
immortal while you are divine a pardon whenever i turn from the right pity and bring me again to the light a master Thou callest, and of this I reply, ready and willing, O Lord, uh, here am I. Be here and to have Brother and Mrs. Midkiff minister to us, and they've got their support raised. Indonesia's open, and they're getting ready to go next month. He's going to come and uh, show a video and then preach. And mungkin saya latihan bahasa Indonesia malam ini. Saya mending my saya senang sekali karena saya bisa memperkenalkan Bapak Pendeta Jonathan Midkiff. Dan saya senang bekas saya bisa mendengar dia berkhutbah malam ini. That means I'm happy tonight because I get to introduce Jonathan, or Pastor Jonathan Midkiff. And I'm so happy because I get to hear him preach tonight. So come on, brother. Indonesia is a place of great spiritual darkness. As the world's largest Muslim nation, Indonesia is home to 230 million followers of Islam. Those who identify as Christian make up a mere 7% of the population. We are the Midkif family, missionaries to Indonesia. God has called us to spread the light of the gospel into the darkness of this nation. Indonesia is composed of more than 17,000 islands. It is located in Southeast Asia, south of the Philippines, and northwest of Australia. With over 270 million inhabitants, Indonesia ranks fourth in world population, following only China, India, and the United States. The island of Java, on which we will be serving, is home to more than half of the nation's population while only being about the size of the state of North Carolina. My wife and I both grew up in the homes of full-time ministry families. We were exposed to the gospel and Christian service from very young ages. As a result, we were saved as children and have been serving alongside our parents for many years. We both attended West Coast Baptist College with the desire to serve the Lord through missions work to Muslim people. After graduation, we served in various church ministries, including Sunday school, youth ministry, music, preaching, and teaching at Christian schools in Ohio and Hawaii. Danielle and I hold degrees in education, which equip us to reach out to the large student population of Indonesia. Indonesia, though being a majority Muslim nation, maintains a degree of religious freedom. This allows us to enter the country rather easily with a religious worker visa. Most Muslim nations are difficult or impossible to gain access to, but Indonesia is an open door of opportunity. After spending a year in the city of Bandung, learning the language and assisting a team of missionaries, we will move to the city of Yogyakarta in central Java. Yogyakarta is the center of education for Indonesia. It is called Kota Pelaja, or city of students. Dozens of universities are located in Jojo, including the largest and most well-known public university in Indonesia. We will be starting a church by partnering with a graduate from a nearby Bible college to assist us as a national pastor. Under Indonesian law, religion is closely monitored by the government. Indonesia has a government-controlled ministry of religion. 
and their religion is even listed on the ID cards of each citizen. Because of this, we will be able to share the gospel freely with anyone who officially identifies as a Christian. But as we reach out to those of other faiths, we must be very careful and more creative with our outreach. We will use our education training to offer tutoring and English language classes as an outreach to the university students. In addition to tutoring, we will offer classes and training in music, sports, technology, and other topics in order to make connections with as many Indonesian people as possible. Our vision for working with the university students is to see the young people come to know Christ and return to their own island, taking the gospel with them. We are looking forward to raising our support as quickly as we possibly can so that we can return to Indonesia and begin our work there. Would you please consider partnering with us as we greatly need your prayers and financial support for this great work that God has called us to in Indonesia. Yeah. All right, and so I, I've shown this video a lot of times now, uh, many, many times, uh, probably over 200 times, but uh, I, I, always, I always like to point out that, the, 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 of course, the sound they're playing at the beginning is the Muslim call to prayer. And uh, my, my daughters try to sing it sometimes, too, when they hear it. And uh, That's not a habit we need, uh, we need to make. <laughs> it is very, can be very melodic and, 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 and beautiful in its own way. But it definitely is an unusual sound, an odd and an eerie sound. Uh, but it's unusual for us to hear here in America. But in Indonesia, that's very ordinary. That'll be a very, very common sound. And in fact, it'll be one of the first things we hear every morning it gets started about 4.30 or 5 o'clock before sunrise every morning. Four other times through the day, they have that prayer reminder. Um, but the sad thing about that, while they do, they're, they're very religious people. They, they pray five times a day. They fast during the month of Ramadan. They give to the poor, and they, have, they do all these rules. They live morally in a lot of ways. But the fact is that they're working so hard to try to get the attention of a God who really in their mind, is so far away, he is far too busy to even notice them. He wants, he doesn't really care about them in their everyday life, but they're hoping because of all these things that they've done and that they've accomplished and all these works that they can do, that they might just get his attention and that when they stand before him, he just might have noticed a lot of these things that they've accomplished and he just might show a little bit of mercy, maybe. But really, they have no hope. They have no way to know that the things that they're doing and working so hard their entire life for is going to earn their way to paradise, to heaven. They, they have, no, they have no, no way to know that. And those are the people that we're going to. And uh, the fact is that, you know, if Jesus Christ came to this earth and was born as a baby and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, the fact is that he loved and died on the cross for Muslim people just as much as he did for us. And, uh, and, and it's, it's easy for us to build our little bubble, you know, around us and our, what we're comfortable with. And we look outside sometimes and see those people in foreign places and people who are of different religions. And sometimes people who, in our mind, we say, man, they're, I don't know about those people. I don't know if, if God could save those kind of a people. And uh, the fact is that he can. And, and the fact is that he loves them. And, and, and God is doing great things, even in the country of Indonesia even in Muslim people around the world in, in difficult and seemingly impossible places. Uh, and so, so we're excited about going to Indonesia. We're not excited about leaving. You know, I told Danielle, you know, I don't, I don't know if I want to leave, you know, after we've been here for a little while. But uh, uh, it's, 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 it's challenging. But, yeah, so uh, we've, we've had a wonderful time in deputation. God's really, really blessed. And so some of you may have, seen, you know, had some pictures from, from here. And uh, some of my students, you know, you may have noticed your picture there. And so your picture has been seen by you know, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people across the United States, so I hope that makes you feel good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, so um, I, I was going to mention this the other night, but there were so many thought, thoughts in, in my mind. Um, so uh, God has really been, you know, has provided our support and all of those uh, and the finances that we need, uh, and so our plan, all the other planning and preparation is, is very much falling into place quickly, a lot of things to do in a very short time. And so our plane tickets to fly to Indonesia are, have been purchased for December the 29th. 
And so today is the third, and so we have less than a month between now and then. There's a lot of things that need to happen between them, between, between uh, now and then. And so uh, one of the things that we've been waiting on is our visas to be processed. And so, uh, and so I believe that they have our, they've, those have been processed now, and um, I, I, I tried to wire them the money that they need for that, and someone didn't make it there, and so got to figure out what went on with that. And, if, and so, so all these little things that you may not really even think about when it comes to getting prepared and to go over to a foreign country and uh, and, and we're right in that. And so please pray for us and for those, all those details and the packing up and the flying and lots of things. And so but we're, we're excited and looking forward to it. It's coming up really quickly. And so it's, it's wonderful. It's a blessing. All right. So let's see. Let's go ahead and jump into God's word this evening. And uh, we are going to be again in, uh, in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And so we will we'll review a little bit uh, so we can... Keep on track here and remind ourselves what we talked about and as we continue uh, in this passage in Luke chapter 2. And so we looked at the first, really the first seven verses of Luke chapter 2, and we'll quickly uh, look at those verses again, and we'll read all the way down through verse 20 this evening. But let's see, Luke chapter 2 and verse 1, the Bible says, As it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. And so last night we talked about how that in those first seven verses, the Messiah has come and uh, the excitement of that and how he fulfilled those promises that had been made and how it was, there were some difficulties in this whole process and some things that uh, it seemed challenging and difficult to overcome. And as that, as that child came into this earth, came, came to this earth, but he was more than just a child. He was more than just a man because we also saw that how his coming was powerful. We saw that he was, he was God in human flesh and he was born here on this earth, God with us and all the things that he would go on to do to show that power through his life. And so we talked about how the Messiah has come and then we talked about the manger that he was laid in, how that it was the last resort, it wasn't the plan, that wasn't the best place, that didn't even, it was kind of ridiculous that he was even there in, in that manger, but also how that just like uh, that the Messiah was put out to a stable and to a manger where he really should not have been, he should have been in palaces, many ways we replace him as well in our lives. Then we talk about our response. What are we going to do about this Savior that's come? What are we going to do with this baby in the manger? Okay, And uh, we talked about how that we should accept him personally in our hearts as our Savior, but also we should take that news of Jesus Christ and spread it around the world, and we should be witnesses of that. Okay, So that's what we talked about last night. And so let's continue reading in verse 8, and we're going to see some other interesting characters here in, this, uh, in these events as they unfold and some interesting things very common to us as we talk about Christmas time. All right, uh, verse 8 of Luke chapter 2 says this, And they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, 
Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept, those, kept these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. All right, and so let's go ahead and let's bow our heads and let's ask the Lord to bless this evening. And then we're going to look at the multitude of angels and we're going to look at these shepherds as well. But let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today, for your blessings. Lord, thank you, Father, for Christmas time. Thank you for the joy of the season. And thank you for the time that we get to spend with family and, and loved ones and to, to celebrate this season in all of our traditional ways, Lord. But more than that, we thank you that you did send your son. We thank you that he came uh, to this earth of, of all places that he created to be born here as, as in the same way as his own creation. And what a strange and unusual thing, but what a wonderful thing. What a beautiful uh, a, a series of events here that took place, Lord, and all so that you could buy us back, redeem us so that you could pay the price for our sins so that we could be reconciled back to you. Peace on earth, Lord. I pray that this evening, that as we look at these events unfolding here again in chapter 2 of, of, of the book of Luke, that we would realize that, that there, we need to, every one of us individually, have peace with you in our hearts, but we need to spread that peace around the world, and share your truth with others. Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your Son. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. And so the, the story gets really exciting here uh, in Luke chapter 2. A lot of things have already gone on. Uh, the, 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 the travel of Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem, and, and they, they came and the baby was born, and it, it, was, it was no doubt... Uh, stressful and, and crazy and, and exciting and, and unusual and, and strange, but the story doesn't end there. There are a lot of things that are going on kind of at the same time here uh, as, as we kind of shift in, in, our, in our scene. We, we see Mary and Joseph, but now we're going to go out to a field kind of on the back side of the, of, of the city here. There are some shepherds, okay? And, uh, and, and they are going to witness something very unusual, something very strange. And again, as I had mentioned yesterday, uh, that there had been a break in communication from, from God. And so it seemed for several hundred years uh, from, from the end of the Old Testament and the last prophet Malachi up until this point. And so really there hadn't been angels appearing to anyone and giving a message from God. There had not been a prophet writing down a new, a new message to give to the people. And so this would have been extraordinary. This would have been been uh, just such a shock and a surprise for these angels to appear. But we see a multitude of angels here that appear to these shepherds. Uh, and and it, it, always, it always amuses me because the first thing that those, that those angels have to say every time when they appear is fear not, okay? Because, man, what a, what a surprise that would be. And uh, we, you know, the, 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 just the description of, of, the, of the angels and how imposing that would be, and what a surprise to these shepherds as they're out there. In, in, in you know, it's they didn't really they didn't have street lights, they didn't really have electric electricity, so it would have been dark. And all of a sudden, boom, the, that angel would have appeared. And, and and the Bible says that it was the angel of the Lord came, and 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 it says the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Okay. This is all very exciting, but what they saw and what they experienced when that angel appeared, and not just the one, then the Bible says there was a multitude of the heavenly host. Okay, and and and, and they didn't just they didn't just you know say the message. Okay, man, it, it, it was it was it must have been pretty intense because it says that they were they were praising God and saying these things. I mean, they they were probably excited about. It. I don't know how how excited angels can get. Okay. But, but I just want you to, to imagine what they would have been witnessing and, and just the, the amazingness of that, just the glory of, of that message as it was being delivered. But more than just what they saw and how it was delivered, 
More exciting than that is the actual message that was being delivered. As we look at this multitude of angels as they appear to the shepherds here, we're going to look at the proclamation of the gospel. The proclamation of the gospel. And really the whole purpose of these angels in this multitude, their mission was to give the gospel. That's what it was all about, this good news. And I've already mentioned it a couple of times. As they're giving this message, the, uh, the, the angel here says in verse 10, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings. Good tidings of great joy. Okay? That word good tidings literally means good news, the gospel. And they were bringing the good news, something great that was happening. More exciting than a wonderful light show. More exciting than a, you know, a, a emphatic and exciting declaration of something was the actual message that they gave. Hey, good news. Something wonderful has happened. What is that good news? What is that gospel? Okay, we use that word a lot. We kind of know in our mind what gospel means, but that good news that we share with others, and, and, and we don't even think about it, you know, as being good news necessarily. It's like, I'm going to go share the gospel. Gonna, you know, we're going to go in and we're going to share the gospel, but it's good news. It's something that's exciting that they need to hear. But this is what that good news is. This is what the gospel is. The gospel is this, that salvation has come through the Messiah, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is here. Okay? This, this idea of salvation talks about how that Jesus came and lived here on this earth, but not like you and I live. He lived a perfect, sinless life. Okay? The Bible makes this very clear. He was tempted in all points, like as we are, yet without sin. He went through the hardships. He stubbed his toe. Okay? He was a carpenter. I'm sure he hit his finger with hammers, okay? but without sin. Okay? I know that, I mean, that in and of itself is, is, is amazing. It's, it's uh, un, unheard of. Okay? He, he, he lived this life. He was here on this earth. He went through the, the, the issues that we do, but perfectly. He was sinless. Okay? He was the only one who could have taken our place. He lived a sinless life, but also it talks about his death. How that he came and offered himself and died for us. Okay? The whole situation around this. And, and he made it very clear that, 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 that you know, they're not going to take my life, but I lay it down. He offered himself as a sacrifice. The Bible it talks about him as, as a lamb. We, we, we read about it th this evening. A lamb that was, that, that, that was dumb before the shearers. He didn't speak out. He didn't try to defend himself. But he offered himself to die on the cross for us. That, th this is part of the gospel. He lived a sinless life. He died for us. He was buried in that tomb. Man, the, j j j just that final closure. When, when, when a loved one passes on, they're buried. They're, they're put in the ground. And it's, it's over. It's finished. But with the Lord Jesus Christ, it didn't end there. Three days later, he rose again, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. That's the gospel. That's the good news. And, and really, there's so much bottled up in this message of the gospel that we could spend hours and hours talking about it, what that means. And I've enjoyed, I, I've done some study on this and, and all the meanings of the gospel and thinking about how to kind of explain that to a Muslim person or someone who has no concept of really the gospel at all, and, and, and what are all the details, and as you, you believe this, what are you actually thinking about, and, 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 and to think about the power of Jesus Christ. He wasn't just a man, but he was God, and, 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 and to believe that he died, but he rose again of his own strength and his own power, that's absolutely amazing. He has to do anything. He has the power to give us victory over sin. He has the power to give us, to, to, to wipe our sin debt clean. He stands between us and God, and when God looks at us, He doesn't see our sin any longer after we put our faith in Christ, but He sees what Christ has done for us. He sees that blood that was shed to, to wash away our sin. No longer is that sin there. It has been completely removed. The Bible says it, 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 our, our offenses have been nailed to His cross. They've been removed and taken out of the way. That's the gospel. That's the proclamation. That's what these angels are talking about. And it is the biggest deal ever. The greatest news that there ever was. And that's what these angels are telling. There's the proclamation of the gospel. But also something interesting that these angels are talking about 
in this message is also the opportunity of the gospel. The opportunity of the gospel. And, and just a very simple phrase, and, and we very easily could read over it if we weren't paying attention in Luke chapter 2 and verse 10. The angel he was speaking, the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Great joy. This fact that Jesus Christ has come should bring great joy. The fact that we no longer have to pay for our own sin, which we could never do. We could never do enough and pay back enough to earn our way to heaven, to perfection. It's impossible. Hey, it's great joy. We can have joy in our heart to know that Christ took our place. How exciting that is. And no other person on earth who has never accepted Christ as a Savior, no one else besides those who know Christ can understand true joy. To know the Lord Jesus. That joy is something that only Christians have. A great joy in this message. But also, in addition to that great joy there, he says, good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Which shall be to all people. During this time period, and through a lot of their history, the Jews thought they were something pretty special. And they were, they were special in a lot of ways. God chose them. And, and, and because just because of who God is, they hadn't done anything special. Abraham was just a regular guy, but God put his hand on them, and God chose them and gave promises to those people. But at this point in time, they got to the point where they thought they were, they, it, it was something they, they had done. And, man, we're great. We're, we're the Jewish people. And they looked down on others. And we could talk about the Samaritans. And, man, they didn't like those guys at all because they had kind of gotten mixed up with the, with the Gentiles who lived in that area. And that was a big deal. They would have looked at those Gentiles. They would have looked at those Samaritans, those religious leaders with scorn. But as the angels were talking to these shepherds and said, this good news is for everybody. This good news is for all people. There's not a, there's not a certain elect group that, man, these guys can get salvation, but everyone else, you guys are left out in the cold. Too bad for you. No, this good news is for everybody, for all people. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter how you grew up. It doesn't matter what your family was like. It doesn't matter what you've done, the things, the mistakes you've made in the past. None of that matters. We could, look at, we could look at all these different factors, all these different categories that we could put ourselves into. People in these foreign countries, people with different religion. And it's easy sometimes for us to look at some people, like, like Muslim people, and say, man, I don't know that the gospel is for them. But that you would be absolutely wrong because the gospel is for all people. There is no one that Jesus Christ did not die for. This is good news for every person, for everybody, everywhere. This is a message of great joy, and this is a message for all people. Anyone and everyone can hear the gospel and be saved. And that's why we're going to Indonesia. And that's why we have missionaries who are going to the big island, and missionaries who are going to the mainland, because they need the gospel there. And missionaries who are going to Africa, and to South America, and, and, and to different places in Europe, and Asia, and around the world, and all these places, because everyone needs to hear the gospel because it is for them, and it is for me, and it is for you. It's for all people. The opportunity of the gospel is for everyone. What great joy we should be spreading. The proclamation of the gospel, the opportunity of the gospel, but this is where it gets really exciting. We see now in this message of the angels the continuation of the gospel, the continuation of the gospel. This really, as we look at Luke chapter 2, is a strange occurrence. We never see anything like this ever again. Okay? Really, the job of the angels were to be messengers. That was their task. And in fact, that's really what the word angel means. Someone who comes and shares a message with you. And we could look through the Bible, and there are a lot of, it's not strange that an angel appeared and told somebody something. That happened a lot in the Bible. Okay? In fact, not too long before this, you know, Gabriel showed up and talked to Mary, and, 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 and Joseph saw an angel in a dream. And we could go back at the different instances when angels would appear and give a message, and this is what's going to happen, or this is what it's going to be like, or you know, I've, I've got something God has given me to, to, to share with you. And, and that was their job, to share those messages. What's strange about this case of these angels giving the message is that this is the only time that 
the, that angels were ever sharing anything about the gospel with people. Okay? This is the only one time, because it was not the job of the angels to be the messengers to spread the gospel. That was not their primary task. God had other plans. The gospel here from this point is going to continue, but it's not going to continue being spread from the mouth of an angel. Things are changing now. As we look at angels, okay, uh, angels are very interesting, and we want, we, you know, there's a lot of things that we could study about them. I'm just going to share a couple of things with you about angels. The fact is that angels, um, they really are not capable to receive or really understand salvation. Okay? Because of how God made them, they, they, they cannot be saved like we are. They don't have necessarily a free will like we do. And so they can't even really comprehend what they're sharing. Hey, there, there's great joy and good news and Jesus has come and, and, and they know who he is, but they don't understand the idea of redemption. They don't understand this idea of salvation. And so they could not be the messengers to carry this on. And so because of that, we see that here at this point, now that responsibility to share the gospel has been passed on to humans, has been passed on to people. Now it is our job to take and to share that gospel. The, the, the multitude of angels appeared, and it was wonderful. It was amazing to see. It was exciting. Wow, the, the, the angels are here, and they're sharing this message. Hey, but now it's our job to share the message. Now it's our job to take that good news, those good tidings, and share them with all people. The multitude of angels and their proclamation, and now it's continuing. As we look now, our final point we're going to look at here in Luke chapter 2 is this. We saw the, we saw the Messiah has come. We, saw, we talked about the manger. We saw the multitude of angels. And then finally, we're going to look at the messengers, the shepherds, the shepherds of all people. The shepherds. All right, let's, if you're there in, in Luke chapter 2, uh, the, the, the Bible tells us that the, in, in uh, verse 8 that they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Okay, these guys are just out there in the field doing their job, minding their own business. Okay, probably not the greatest job ever. Okay, I don't know much about you know, the, this aspect of society and the different jobs, but you know, there probably weren't people lining up to be shepherds, okay? It, it would have been a difficult job, could have been a dangerous job in many cases, okay? And so it was a very physical job as far as labor. It was probably a little bit boring, okay? They're just sitting out there at night. Someone's got to keep their eyes open, stay awake, and they take shifts, and they got to make sure nothing's going to get the sheep and eat the sheep. It was probably pretty boring, okay? They had just an ordinary job. But at this point here in Luke chapter 2, really everything kind of changes for them. And as we look at these messengers, we are going to see a transformation that takes place in these messengers. There's a transformation. Things are going to change now in their lives forever. They're out there watching their sheep, and boom, all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord, a multitude of angels, they hear this good news. They hear that Jesus Christ has come. And I want you to see now what happens to them. What do they do? Verse 15 of Luke 2, And it came to pass that the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And he came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in, the man in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And we see that because of these events that they saw, the things that they heard, what they witnessed, seeing Jesus Christ there in the manger, it completely changed them. These shepherds, they were just ordinary people, just like you and me. They weren't trained speakers and, and, and orators, okay? They had not been trained to go out and necessarily, you know, you know talk with people and you know, they hadn't even gone to a soul-winning, uh, you know, seminar to learn what to say and the things to do. Uh, they had not been trained in this way. They were just regular old people. They were just laborers, workers out in the field. We see that also their, their job was pretty simple. Their job was to keep sheep. 
They weren't religious leaders. They hadn't gone to the religious schools to learn and study and, to, and, and, and necessarily to memorize large portions of Scripture. They didn't know all the finer details of, of doctrine and theology, and they hadn't been trained in this way like some of the Pharisees and Sadducees had studied the, the Old Testament law. They were just ordinary people. But we see that in spite of all that, God used them in an amazing way, and they did things that were out of the ordinary for someone like them. They did something that was extraordinary. They heard that news, and they went and shared it with everyone they could find. And I'm, I feel like reading this, that when the people heard it, they thought they were a little bit crazy because of what they had to say. Verse 18, and, they, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. This was strange. This was unusual. What, what are they talking about? Why are they doing this thing? Something is different about that guy. Man, I, I was just hanging around him, and this isn't like him at all. Something's different because of what he's heard and what he's seen. There was a transformation that happened in these shepherds. God equips the believers in the church with spiritual gifts that allow us to serve God beyond our natural ability. God allows us as we serve him and as we do those things and as we are a witness and as we share God's word, the Bible talks about these spiritual gifts. And these are things that God gives us that we can do. We can share God's word and we can serve in ways that are beyond what we naturally could. And this is exactly what happened to the shepherds. They did things that were uncharacteristic of themselves naturally. They were transformed by the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what it will do to everyone who accepts Christ. It will transform you and change you. We see the transformation of the messengers, and then finally we see the testimony of the messengers. The testimony. They've heard these things, they've seen these things, and they cannot keep it to themselves. They cannot keep it quiet. We have got to tell everyone about this good news. The, the angels, and then there was the baby, and he's the Messiah, and he's come, and we know he's the one who's going who's gonna to save us from our sins. And, man, I can't be quiet about this good news. I've got to go. You know, but m maybe they were a little bit afraid. You know, man, I don't know that I can go and talk about this to people. I, I kind of stutter, and I'm not sure what I'm going to say. And I get a little bit uncomfortable around people. And I, I, I'm not sure about that. But you know what? You know, that's okay. I'm, I've got to tell them. They've got to hear it. They've, it, uh, it doesn't really matter who it is. I'm going to go and tell everyone. Absolutely amazing that they went and told everyone that they could possibly find. And there in verse 17, when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. They went everywhere they could go. They spread out. They said, hey, come on, let's share that news. We've got to tell our friends. We've got to tell our neighbors. We've got to tell the other shepherds that we know around here. We've got to spread that news. They spread the gospel everywhere. And although they were ordinary people, just regular guys, they really became, after Jesus here, they, they became the very first missionaries. They spread the good news. They spread the gospel. The fact is, we will never be able to communicate like angels can. We will never be able to necessarily have that voice, to have that ability to say things just right the way that, you know, you know, we would feel comfortable. We may never be fully aware that, 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 you know, of, of our abilities of sharing the gospel, but the fact is that God has commissioned us. God has given us the job of sharing that good news with others. The angels can't do it. It is now our job. Are we being witnesses? Are we sharing God's good news with others? Just like the shepherds, it doesn't take anyone special. It doesn't take extraordinary ability all it requires is willingness. As we make ourselves available to God, God will give us what we need to share the gospel. God will give us the boldness. He'll give us the words to say, the clearness of thought. God will open up those doors and those opportunities to share the gospel. The multitude of angels, the messengers, the shepherds. Let's go and let's be messengers. Let's go and be like the shepherds and share God's word with those around us. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for, the, for this Christmas story, and thank you that we can look on these things and for this example we see of these shepherds, Lord. I pray, Father, that although it's easy for us to make excuses in our minds, help us be willing 
to serve you in whatever way that we can. Help us to get up, and though we may not feel qualified, help us to go in your strength. Help us to be witnesses for you. Help us to be just like the shepherds and to share your word with others, Father. Thank you for all you do for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you stand? Something you need to talk to the Lord about? Won't you come to an old-fashioned altar and pray? Won't you come? Thank you. Be seated. Thank you, Brother Jonathan, and uh, appreciate that uh, message. Isn't it great? Uh, this year we had our missions conference during uh, the Christmas holiday season with the theme "Joy to the World," and I think it's great because uh, the Lord only had one son, and he was a missionary. And uh, what a blessing uh, to celebrate Christmas and to think at the heart of Christmas is missions. Well, I appreciate you being here. We have been hit hard with a lot of folks, praise the Lord, not having COVID, but a lot of folks having colds and, and things, and it's been uh, something else. So I'm glad that uh, everybody's uh, hopefully on the mend, and we'll see a good crowd here on Sunday morning. Uh, but before that, tomorrow morning is our men's prayer breakfast, and I hope you'll be able to be here for that, fellas. We'll have a breakfast made, and uh, that'll be great. It'll be at 8.30, and then we'll have a time of prayer. And if you have time to stay on just a little while, we need to put the tarps back on this frame here for our banquet and then set up some tables to get ready for that banquet. So if you have about 20 minutes after our prayer time to stay and to set up some tarps and uh, tables, that'll be a tremendous uh, help. And uh, speaking of that, don't forget Church Sunday, Sunday School. Brother Jonathan will be teaching the junior high class, high school class, college and career, all the adult classes, all combined in here, and of course the children will have a special mission message in each one of their classes, but he'll be teaching in here, then preaching Sunday morning, we'll be taking up our faith promise on Sunday, and so be prepared uh, for that, and then their international banquet. I want to encourage you to use this banquet as an opportunity to get on the phone, invite a friend to come. Uh, they can hear the gospel and come to know the Lord, and uh, they'll be well fed because our ladies here as you know do a great job on all these countries and I'm going to ask my wife to tell me what countries this year we have because it helped me out a little bit because I'm not clear on all these flags I'll guess some of them first of all Navajo food right so that's going to be a first right and uh, that's going to be mesquite beans with buzzard guts it's going to be great no 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 i made <laughs> i made that up uh but anyway we got navajo food i'm sure the navajo people wouldn't appreciate that joke but uh, uh, uh nevertheless then we have indonesian food right and you're in charge of that right so we'll have nasi goreng and all kinds of stuff okay then we have uh israeli food jewish food okay and then we have brazilian food okay and South African food. And I'm missing something. Ukraine. Wow, okay. Is that it? Seems like there's one more. Indian. Indian food. Okay. So that'll be great. Invite a friend. This thing is fantastic. And uh, I've had missionaries tell me. Now, every church across the country has international banquets. But I've had missionaries tell me that have been to all these banquets across the country tell us tell me that ours is the best well i'll believe it and uh I, you know i'll take it and uh so we're going to have a great time with that be sure and invite a friend and then in prayer tonight uh, i want you to please remember jamie's dad continue to pray for him and of course brother richardson 
uh, during his loss. The funeral will be on the 14th. Pray we can be a blessing. Then continue to pray for Brother Sadoyama. He's healing from this knee surgery. But uh, last night or in the morning, he, he I guess, got up, too, he got up too early. And there's some kind of big word that the doctor gave for it. Well, he passed out. And so Miss Sadoyama had to get help from Brother Matt and call the ambulance to come. And he had a ride to the uh, uh, emergency room and did everything, all checked out. It's just, a, I guess, after surgery, a lot of energy is going toward healing. And the doctors just tell him, when you stand up, do it slowly, you know. So anyway, you pray for them. He's doing, I'm, I'm praying he'll turn the corner real soon and, and get all better and uh, of course, she's had colds, and, and so, boy, just doesn't, almost doesn't seem normal not to have them here at our uh, missions conference. I sure have uh, missed them this week, so pray for them. And then also, uh, Brother Nick Sykes went out on some training uh, for a while, and his family's gone, and then it came back, and they contracted COVID. So he asked if we'd pray uh, for them, and, and we certainly will. So let's stand together in prayer. Good to be here. And uh, I think I saw my, did I see my friend, Brother Dale, back there? Is that right? Would you come up here and pray for us? Uh, this is Brother Haggith, and he's uh, a dad of one of our missionaries, uh, uh, Tiffany, and uh, over in Papua New Guinea. And he's a member over here at Windward uh, Baptist Church. And by the way, talk about missions, pray for their pastor, Brother Kana, is traveling, and he'll be doing a mission conference over in Texas. So pray for Pastor Kana as uh, he's traveling doing that and and uh, so brother Haggett come well, let's pray <clears throat> dear heavenly father we're just grateful that um this church is able to get together and and uh support missions lord and i just pray that uh, they continue to do that and be that light that you want us to be uh, within the community that you have set us or placed us i pray lord that you'd also help us to be faithful in the workplace to shine bright and I uh, thank you for the preaching this evening, and I uh, pray, Lord, that you would uh, help us to um, have uh, joy and uh, peace that uh, nobody else can give and, or you can't receive from anybody else but from you, and that this Christmas season will be all about you, and, and it will be a great uh, time, Lord. And I just pray now you just help us to have a great evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.